Hi guys, welcome back to Tumblr Talk with Little Lee and Rose. I'm Summer Noel, and today we are gonna do a super fun crackle. Normally with my tutorials, I kind of start out at the beginner level and then do a simple one and then work my way up to a little more difficult and then work my way up to a little more difficult. And it's kind of like a series so that the beginners can start with us. But this one, we are just gonna dive in. We're gonna get a little intense on this one, but it's gonna be a beautiful finish. And I believe the directions should be easy enough for even a beginner to follow. Um, so that's why we're just going to dive into this one. So what you're going to need, you're going to need a few more, more tools than this, but I just didn't want to crowd my workspace with all the extra little gloves and, and chemical masks and epoxies and stuff. But to start this one off, what your basic things that you're going to need are going to be your paint base paint color, which I'm going to do purple. I'm going to do two purples. You need Elmer's glue, school glue. glue. You want it, this just plain old Elmer's, nothing fancy. You don't want the like special crazy one you just want a Elmer's glue and whatever top coat you want so I'm gonna do purple on the bottom and crackle and white on the top so the white will be the the top color and the crackle that shows through is gonna be these purples um, you need two different paint brushes one to apply the Elmer's glue one to apply the acrylic paint um, I got my tumbler ready I'm gonna do it on this one because I, I think the design that I'm gonna do on it is gonna be really pretty with a slight modern curve on it and I haven't decided on my vinyl color. I'm gonna kind of wait to see as we go, but I'm feeling like I'm either gonna do this rose gold vinyl or this really pretty pink. Um, and you will understand why with this pink glitter, why I might choose this as my vinyl because the image that I'm gonna put on this has a little bit of a pink in it. So um, you could probably hear my cricket in the background. It is print and cutting that image like crazy. Um, it's a very detailed one. Um, you probably also hear all my turners going because I've got them all going with fun different stages of different tutorials that I'm working on for you guys. And so this week is gonna be a super fun week. I'm releasing some really cool cups for you guys to, to work on and try and just to see and get inspired. Um, it's gonna be super fun. So I'm gonna jump in. If you have not learned how to prep a cup yet, and this is the first video you've seen of me, also you can subscribe to my channel because I've got a lot of fun tutorials on there. I try to make them as easy as I can to follow with very clear instructions. Um, and one of the tutorials I do is how to prep your cup. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sanding this, washing this, and base painting this um, and getting it ready. You want to sand so that everything you put on it grips onto the cup really, really well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely spray the cup with this dark purple. And then I'm going to just do random bursts of this light purple over it, almost to make it look like a little firework hit it of light purple. You will see why I do that. It's to give you a little texture. Again, I've said I'm not starting with the basic um, crackle on this one. We're getting a little more advanced uh, and having fun. So that's why I'm going to do some of these bursts. That way it's going to show some texture through, through the crackle. So you'll get some light and some dark peeking through. I think it'll be really, really cool and give it a really cool effect. All right, so I'm going to prep this cup. I'm going to get it spray painted and we will be back. So we're back and you can see um, what I was talking about with the little like bursts of paint on the cup. I just kind of squirt, 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 and then sprayed over it a little bit. I did. I actually ended up doing three colors because I thought the really light color looked almost too white, so I wanted to have it. So I ended up using a small, medium, large of the versions of the color. So dark, medium, and light, and I just sprayed it like that. So what that's just going to do is just add texture behind this. It, so it's not just one flat color. Okay. So now I'm going to have to work very quickly. So I'm going to kind of explain what I'm going to do before I start doing it so that I can get it all in there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush, it's a pretty soft bristle brush. The more, so this is when you get your crackle, guys. The, the thicker amount of, of Elmer's glue that you get on there, and the faster it dries, the thicker, bigger cracks you get. If you want the tiny little skinny cracks, you'll put on less Elmer's glue, and, and then your, uh, and then your uh, uh, acrylic paint, sorry. So we're using acrylic paint. But I like the big, fat, heavy cracks because it, then it shows the color really well. If you're just doing like brown and white and you just want the effect, then sometimes the skinnier cracks are nicer, but I'm really trying to let the color show through. So we're gonna go for some thicker cracks. So I'm gonna load up my, my little brush here with the Elmer's glue. I have my fan set off here to the side. It's not blowing yet, but, um, and when you do this, you only do wanna do one side at a time because unless you have two fans blowing from each side, you can do the whole thing, but whatever faces the fan is gonna dry the fastest. So if you do this all and you only have one side with a fan, the other side won't crack as much because it's not gonna dry as fast because it doesn't have the fan blowing on it. So I'm gonna do one side just to show you guys. I have two fans, but I'm gonna, just for example, I'm gonna do one side, we're gonna turn it straight at the fan and let the fan blow on it and get, and get the crackle. So I'm gonna put a thick, thick layer of this Elmer's glue down 
Then very carefully, while it's Im immediately, don't let it dry at all, gently brush the white acrylic paint over the top. Now you don't wanna paint, 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 paint and mix the two together. You wanna to try to get the one coat down and then the second coat over the top without disturbing too much of the paint. It's okay if a little mixes, but it, you won't get as big of a crackle in that area. So you really wanna to try to just gently brush it on. So we're gonna just get this going here and I'm gonna do, actually I'm gonna do the whole bottom because I want it to be very unified in the crack. So I'm gonna glob that on the front, grab that, I mean glob that on the bottom and then just get this on the cup. And it doesn't have to be pretty, it just needs to be pretty heavy. And like I said, only half the cup, so I'm gonna make my line, that's the half. So that I paint, stay within there. So you just kinda, it doesn't matter if there's brush strokes, you won't see them. Elmer's glue dries clear, so this will not be visible. Um, a lot of tutorials you're watching, they'll use some kind of special cracking, crackling medium. It's expensive and it does the exact same thing as Elmer's glue that costs two bucks. So. I'm pretty, I haven't checked ingredients, but I'm pretty sure whatever's in the crackle medium is basically Elmer's glue, but they charge a lot more for it. And it might work a little better. I don't know. I don't need to use it. I've never had a problem with my crackles doing it with the Elmer's. Okay, so you see I've got a nice thick layer. It's pretty white. Um, I'm going to add just a, the last little bit that's in this cup to the top. Keep it thick. All right, so now I'm going to immediately switch, put that brush down, and I'm going to switch to my purple I mean, to my white acrylic paint, I'm gonna really load up the paintbrush. Like I said, you don't wanna to brush too much and I'm pretty much just gonna lay it across the top and really only brush in the area once, like once across and see, that just, just like that, you don't wanna mix it. Okay, so now we're gonna do the sides, loading up my brush, getting one good swoop, thick swoop down all the way down the cup. Reload the brush. I don't actually, the drying, hanging, drying rack is actually in my way. I thought it would be helpful. Sorry, moving that out of the way. Almost spilled my paint. Okay, I couldn't get a good angle to do the bottom part. So you go straight down, switch the brush, straight down, load your brush, straight down, switch it over. I'm just re rotating the brush left and right or up and down back and forth, whatever. Gosh, that's however you want to say that. So then I switch it, do the other side and brush it down. So anywhere you have little areas that are not covered, just go back through, gently brush them. All right. You don't want to fuss with it too much because you can end up messing it up. So I'm gonna leave it. I'm now gonna put that paintbrush off to the side. I'm gonna bring my drying rack back in. Stick it down, face it towards this fan and get the fan going. And then this, I will probably leave this a good, well, it really only takes a couple hours. You'll see it in like 20 minutes, it'll start cracking. But I will probably, it's, it is very late here. It's about 10.30 at night here. So I'm just gonna get this going and leave it to dry overnight with this fan just blowing straight on it, full speed. You guys, a, be, a big fan is better, but for this tutorial, I just brought in this little fan um, because I wanted you guys to be able to see how I set it up. So I have the paint facing straight into this fan. All right, so we're gonna let this crack overnight and just dry and cure up. Not cure up because it's not epoxy, but you get the idea. The paint is gonna dry and as it dries, it's gonna pull and separate those, uh, the top paint. The Elmer's glue will separate the top paint and we'll be back tomorrow. See you guys soon. Okay, so one side is done. You can see this side with that heavy, heavy amount of glue that I used. We got some really big cracks. It looks really awesome. You can definitely see the texture of the different colors of paints underneath. It's really showing through really well and it looks fantastic. It's, it's fantastic. It's exactly what I wanted to do. So, um, a lot of people worry about this and they're like, oh, there's a glob here or a drip here or something. Under epoxy, this looks amazing. You don't wanna like overthink your crackle because some people, oh, this area looks bad. It's just meant to look rustic and like barn wood and just really cool. And so every little detail that's on there just adds to it. Like this funky little thing here that happened. It's gorgeous, it works. Um, so don't overthink what your crackle is, just go for it. 
Um, so you'll see the, the paint dripped a little bit. I already picked it off a little bit, but so what I'll do to get these little edges done and off is I'll just take a really light piece of sandpaper and sand down that edge, edge and get it smooth before I put on the epoxy. All right, so we are gonna go ahead and start with the other side. Um, you've already seen me do this once, so I'm gonna kind of speed you guys up so you don't have to tediously watch me paint and do it again. But I wanted you guys to be able to see it even if it's in uh, sped up motion, just to reiterate like how I do it, the application process, et cetera, et cetera. All right, here we go. All right, so now we have the cup completely coated on the second side with the glue and the paint. And I'm gonna take this, and you guys saw, I just put a heavy coat of Elmer's on, and then I put a heavy coat and very gently applied that paint. And I don't brush back and forth, just one long swoop, a little extra maybe if you missed a spot, but really you just wanna get the paint on there in one easy, fast coat. All right, guys, so I'm gonna go stick this in front of the fan. I will probably let it completely dry for at least 12 hours before I let um, any epoxy touch this or we add any kind of decaling or anything because I wanna make sure it's really, really dry and this paint is kind of thick. So I would say 12 hours minimum. All right, we will be back. So the cup has totally finished. It has been about 24 hours since I did the last step of this one. You can see all the drips off the top. I'm gonna show you guys how to fix that. The bottom looks amazing. Um, we had one big glop kind of slide and fall off in the process, but I am not worried about it because I'm just going to stick my decal over it and it's going to hide most of it and it'll just kind of blend in. Um, that's kind of the fun thing about adding vinyl and decals to these cups is if you have a small little spot, you can kind of hide it and make it work because I am very big on figuring it out, making it work. I stripped very, very few cups. I've probably stripped maybe five cups my entire tumbler career because I just make stuff work and it always ends up beautiful. Okay, so first our little problem is we're gonna work with these drips on the top. I'm gonna use a super sharp X-Acto knife and a little piece of sandpaper. And what I'm gonna just do is slide this along the top. I'm, I don't wanna like actually push. I'm almost doing like a, a gentle sawing motion. If you push, you're gonna rip the paint and it'll probably tear down into here. So you just wanna gently take your X-Acto knife and push and almost saw it like a little saw and slice it off. If um, there's a spot that's too thick and it won't gently easily remove, with a, a, just a very gentle uh, knife, like me just gently gliding this along the top. If I actually have to start trying to push because it won't cut, then that's when you would sand. But this one looks like it's doing pretty good. It's still, it's pretty thin. But if you have a really big, heavy glop, you just don't want to force that because um, you'll get, like I said, it'll, it'll kind of mess up the rest of the cup. There's a little piece still right here. All right, so the top of this cup is looking pretty good. Pretty solid. Okay, so we got the top. So I don't actually have to sand because I didn't need to. But um, if you need to or you want to, you can just gently along the rim to make sure it's smooth and flat. But for this cup, it wasn't necessary because it was pretty darn good. All right, so now we're going to do these. And we're going to talk about this sticker because I get a lot of questions about this. I'm going to do a full tutorial, tutorial for you guys. I'm working on getting all the extreme details like pricing and like printing everything out on different papers um, so that you can see the comparison between printable vinyl, uh, regular sticker paper, water slide, white water slide. I'm going to show you how to use all of them and the differences. But my favorite is just printing on sticker paper and then if I don't want it to go see-through, like the wet look where you can kind of see the um, behind it, then you back it with vinyl. So these, if you look real close, you can almost see like this little piece of vinyl sticking out here. It's so, so minuscule, but um, I back mine with vinyl. So what I do is I do the print the image on my Cricut through my printer, then I cut it, then I go back into the same exact Cr Cricut program and click it to not print and just cut. Then I run vinyl through and it will cut the exact same outline shape and then I lay the sticker over the top. That way it goes completely opaque. So when the epoxy goes on top of this, it won't, it, it'll still have that wet look, but it won't go see-through. So you won't be able to see all this behind. The reason I'm doing it on this cup is I feel like there's so much busyness behind it that it would really muddle up the sticker um, and I don't want to do that. So I've got just the sticker. I have two little stickers printed for this one. Um, I'm going to put... Um, the stickers on one side and a monogram on the other. I think it'll be really cool. Uh, but the monogram is just personal. It's going to be my probably my personal initials or when I get to that point, I'll decide. So you see, I just bend, bend it back and I pull the sticker and the vinyl up together. 
So people have asked me, how do you get it to lay exactly on top with all these details? And I, my only response to that that I have for that is very, very carefully. I just, I do it slow and steady. I don't try to just slam the sticker down. I mean, the sticker paper down on top of the vinyl. I just carefully, 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 very slowly lay it like a little corner at a time and work it around until the entire thing is together. Um, so there is that. So I'm going to try to cover up, not the whole, not this whole spot, because it's fine, a little bit peeking out, but a little bit of it. So we're going to lay this sticker down here. And as I always do, I put the middle down first and walk my way out on one side. Then I go on the other side, and this has a little tiny piece over here. And I'm going to walk my way out. I'm sure I'm going to get asked to get these images. So you guys, I'm going to put the Etsy link to where I purchased these images down uh, in the drop down menu as long as well as the supply list of the supplies I used because these are beautiful images and I found them on Ep Etsy um, and I bought them with commercial licensing and they were a little more expensive that way, but it just makes it to where the, the artist, she is actually an artist. She makes these, she does all of her own designs and I'm helping support her business a little bit. Um, and by uh, buying the rights for commercial licensing, it supports her a little bit more and makes it to where it's completely on the up and up and I'm not um, stealing anything or using anything from another artist that um, they're trying to keep um, almost like theirs. Okay, so I'm gonna offset this one a little bit just because I think that'll be prettier and just a little more fun character on it. So I've got that one there and I'm gonna turn the cup just a little bit to the side and I'm gonna put this one here. So again, I put it down in the middle, press out from one side, press out from the other. All right, so that's super duper cute. Um, the reason I'm putting this on straight onto the paint is because I'm not using transfer tape, so I'm not gonna accidentally lift away any of this paint when I remove the transfer tape. And because these sticker papers with vinyl tend to take a little bit more uh, coverage with the epoxy because they are a little thicker because there's two layers there instead of one. So I don't wanna do a base coat and then stick it and then like three more coats on top. So I'm hoping that this um, saves me one extra coat of epoxy by putting it down first, then getting a nice layer, then I'll put the um, monogram on this side and then I will put the final two coats of epoxy on there. So ultimately this will probably have three coats of epoxy, one over this and then two over the rest of it and, and over the um, monogram. And the reason um, it, I'm gonna put three is just to make sure it has a nice solid base. So when you guys see me do this, if you don't have a turner, you can do this one with hang method. Um, you're just gonna use a little bit more. Usually I say two milliliters um, for the hang method. Uh, if you're gonna try to cover this cup and get it up and over the sticker paper without damaging it, one, I would definitely throw a seal coat over the top of this with clear spray paint. If you're doing epoxy only on the turner, you don't need to seal, you do not need to seal your sticker paper. Even if you're using inkjet, the paper absorbs the ink and it's not gonna go anywhere. But if you're gonna to try to do the hang method over here, the reason I say to seal it is because if you're dragging your finger, you're probably gonna catch some of these little fine details and lift them up. And if you seal them down, it's gonna keep them in place a little bit better for when, you, when you're when you sliding your finger over it for the hang method. All right, so we are gonna, um, I'm gonna throw this on the turner and get the epoxy going on it. I'm not gonna epoxy on camera. Um, you guys have seen me do it a million times. If you haven't seen me do it and you don't know what how that works, just jump back on any of my other videos and you will see it. Um, especially my basic tutorials, any like basic glittering, basic um, glittering with hang method. You'll see me epoxying in any of those videos. All right, we'll be back. Hey guys, we are back and this gorgeous cup is done. It's The finish is absolutely glossy. It has the perfect look that I wanted, that vintage -y look with the different colors behind the paint. So it's not just one solid color screaming out at us. It's got a bunch of little dark darks and lights coming out through the back and front, um, through the front, sorry. And the decals look great. The crackle is beautiful. You can see how big these pieces of cracks are. That is from uh, using a heavy amount of Elmer's glue. If you don't want your cracks to be this big, um, you, you can use less Elmer's glue. So the less you use, the more you're gonna get more like this little area where it's little tiny cracks. Um, but I like the big cracks because I, I'm the whole purpose of doing it is to really see that color. So that's why I really like, but not everybody is going for that look. Um, this actually works really pretty if you do a glitter base and then you do the crackle on top of the glitter base and it shows the glitter through. I've done that a couple times. If you jump on my Etsy page, there's a few of them on display in my Etsy page that I've done like that. It's really, really pretty. I will add that to the tutorial list for you guys too so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. 
All right, but that's this cup. She's beautiful. There's my a decal on the back for my sister's um, initials. Um, it, you guys can personalize this any way you want. Add vinyl, put a name, uh, I'll, I'll put a Bible verse or phrase or whatever you want. I'm not going to put anything on the bottom that I normally do because this bottom is so pretty with the crackle on it. I am not going to cover that up. So um, this one is con considered complete. Uh, give us a thumbs up, guys, if you like this video and you learned something. Uh, check out the drop-down menu under the video. We'll have a whole supplies list for things that you'll need. Um, I've also got some links. You guys can check us out on social media. I have a Facebook page. If you've got questions, that's the easiest place to get a hold of me and get answers to your questions. Um, it's also a great place for inspiration and support where there's a whole bunch of us out there making tumblers. So if I'm not readily available to answer a question, somebody on my page, one of my members can probably jump in there for me and help you out. We got some great knowledge in there. Uh, so we look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Have a great day, guys. Bye.